It took a long time to educate uh, advertisers. We used all mediums, radio, television, and print, but uh, we were reluctant to use Spanish radio or Spanish television because we really couldn't uh, satisfy ourselves as to where that fit in this market. When we went personally uh, to the major advertising agencies throughout the country, we went to those and sold them ourselves. I went personally to every one of them. I used to know, I don't know, 150, 200 uh, people in advertising agencies. Well, it was a tough sale, but uh, I don't know if you've ever exposed to, to salespeople. The ones that have good personalities, that are fun to be with, and really nice people, you, you enjoy having them coming around. It breaks up the routine a little bit. Well, that describes Emilio in spades. Emilio Nicolás came to uh, tell me just on a cold call how I absolutely was missing the big part of the market because the Hispanic population is over 50%. And at first, I enjoyed him so much, uh, just personally, that uh, I really didn't pay that much attention to what he was selling. And uh, finally, after he made two or three calls, uh, he got exasperated. He said, you know, I enjoy this visit, Red, but when are you going to do some business with me? <laughs> In the 50s and well into the 60s, Spanish language advertising accounted for only $5 million annually a fraction of all English language advertising. The Hispanic market today, however, accounts for nearly $700 billion and continues to rise. He, as a total pioneer, absolutely built that program of advertising on the Spanish language television. Now, it's routine. Uh, it's uh, something that, quote, is a part of everyone's portfolio. But when Emilio started hitting the streets with it, it was not. When we went into this thing, we didn't go to just get uh, that one station. We wanted every single market in the country. The success he made of the station here led him to help the, uh, the start a new Spanish language station throughout the United States. We uh, bought Miami, we built San Francisco, we built a lot of other smaller stations. The Spanish International Network was born. And with the need to link the individual stations, Nicolás and his company once again changed American television. We were all isolated in those days. And it was not that we finally got on the satellite and well, I shouldn't say finally, we were the first ones to get on satellite. Other networks, like CNN, soon followed the Spanish language network's pioneering example. Additionally, the network brought World Cup soccer to the United States for the first time. And in 1982, the network led the way to equal opportunity by hiring the first woman to host a national primetime newscast. The network finally sold in 1987, becoming Univision to this day, the largest Spanish language network in the United States. At a testimonial dinner, business and community leaders lauded his efforts. I think that you have allowed the Hispanics in Texas to develop self-pride. And a man that was deeply proud of being Mexicano, of someone who never really forgot where he came from and who he was. But this is a man who had a dream about communications between people and between countries. And he enabled that dream like an eagle to soar to star stained heights because of his vision and his talent and his sensitivity to others. In his family. He has, and I agree, a deep sense of something that I hope is not going to be lost forever, which is the sense of being an honest and human uh, being. Because patriotic, free enterpriser, family man, energetic, good friend, 
loyal and a good example to the people of our community. San Antonio is indeed lucky that Emilio Nicolás has been at work these last few years. And America is the better because his work has been so successful. This comes, Emilio, from all the employees of the company who have absolutely grown to love and respect and admire the absolutely awesome job you did. You're a giant, and it's been my honor to have you as a mentor and as an advisor. And uh, you're more than a friend. You're more than a partner. You're my brother. I think that Emilio recognized earlier, early on, the democratic principle that is paramount in this country that the airwaves belong to the public. But he also understood that the airwaves that were in existence were not being accessed fully by the Spanish speaking community. He has to prove that we are watching television, that we want to watch television, but now we want to watch television in Spanish. I think that it was inside of Emilio to do this for our city and do it for our people. I don't think enough people realize, you know, what he did he, from a Spanish language. Standpoint, he put San Antonio on the map. 